love unrequited robs me of my rest. Love, hopeless love, my ardent soul encumbers. Love, nightmare like, lies heavy on my chest and weaves itself into my midnight slumbers. When you're lying awake with a dismal headache and repose is tabooed by anxiety, I can see you may use any language you choose to indulge in without impropriety. For your brain is on fire, the bed post conspire, a beautiful slumber to thunder you. But your counterpane goes and uncovers your toes, then your sheet slips demurely from under you. The flame of these crystals you feel like big pickles, so terribly sharp as a pricking. And you're hot and you're cross and you tumble and talk till there's nothing but you in the ticking. Then the bed clothes all creep to the ground in a heap and you pick them all up in a tangle. Then you're Below resides and politely declines to remain at its usual angle. When you get some repose in the form of a dose with hot eyeballs and head of a raking, but your slumber teems with such horrible dreams that you'd very much better be waking. For you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in a steamer from Harwich, which is something between a large bathing machine and a very small second class carrier. And you're giving a treat, plenty ice and cold meat, to a party of friends and relations. They're a ravenous horde, and they all came on board at Stone Square and South Kensington Station. And bound on that journey, you find your returning, who started that morning from Devon. He's a bit undersized, and you don't feel surprised when he tells you he's only 11. <laughs> While you're driving like that with this singular lad, by the by, the ship's now a four-wheeler. And you're playing around games, and he calls you bad names, and you tell him that ties pay the dealer. Well, this you can't stand, so you throw up your hand, and you find you're as cold as an icicle. In your shirt and your socks look like silk with gold pots, tossing Salisbury Plain on a bicycle. And he and the crew are on bicycles too, which they somehow or other invested in. And he's telling the tars all the particulars of a company he's interested in. It's a scheme of devices to get at low prices, all goods from top bitches to cables, which tickle the sailors by treating retailers as though they were all vegetables. You get a good statesman to plan a small trade, but first take off his boots with a boot tree. His legs will take root, and his fingers will shoot, and he'll blossom and bud like a fruit tree. From the green grocery tree, you get grapes, green pea, cauliflower, pineapple, and cranberries. Well, the pastry cook pot, cherry brandy, and crot, apple puffs, and three corners, and banberries. The shares of a penny, and ever so many, are taken by Rothschild and Bering. And just as if you are allotted to you, you await with a shudder despairing. <gasps> You're a regular wreck with a prick in your neck, and no wonder you saw for your head's on the floor. You've needles and pins from your soul to your shins, your flesh is a creep, your left is a sleep, and you crap on your toes and a fire in your nose, to puff on your lung and a feverish tongue, and a thirst that's intense in a general sense that you haven't been sleeping in clover. <gasps> But the darkness is past, and it's daylight at last. The night has been long, ditto, ditto, my soul. And thank goodness, have both of them. Oh.